Working on an unfinished Victoria steamboat. This is part one, the overview. The steamboat definitely needs some TLC. The engine would not even rotate. The lower water gauge was very badly corroded and the propeller shaft is very rusty. Before I start the overview, I'd better explain that I commercially repair models for people. Sometimes I get a lot of jobs in and other times I don't. When I receive an inquiry, I ask them to email me photographs. I can generally tell by the photographs whether the job is a practical proposition or not. Looking at the photographs of this model, it seemed like it was, and I'm quite happy with the condition of it. Well, not really happy, but at least it's going to be practical to fix it. In due course, the customer and a friend arrived and delivered the boat for me to repair. I'm going to have a quick look at all the components of the boat, starting with the cabin parts, including the seating. These seem to be reasonably well made. A couple of the flagpoles are quite badly bent, and some of the fittings are missing. There should be a small brass light here. I don't know what left this mark. It was green anyway. Here's a side view of the cabin, and it's quite well put together, although, as you can see, it is currently unglazed. Time to look at just some of the problems with it. For me, the brief is to make the steam plant work, not rebuild the boat, and I've priced the job accordingly. This is a bit of a problem. The prop shaft is seized in the bushes, and when I tried to pull the prop shaft out, the bush came out as well. This wooden part underneath the boat definitely needs painting, and there isn't a part known as a skeg, S-K-E-G, which supports the rudder. Time to look in the engine compartment. At first glance I thought this was a Cheddar Models puffin plant, but it's not. This particular engine I've never seen before. As far as I can see, this is a Clyde engine, but it's fitted with an oscillating water pump. I did a bit of googling to see if I could find anything similar on the web. I soon found adverts for the Clyde engines, but I didn't see any fitted with water pumps. There is a red gas tank, and at first when I looked at this I thought, is this a Maxwell Hemmons model? But searching the web again using Google, nothing like this came up. It's a real strange box of tricks. Here you can see the gas tank, which is connected to a gas regulator, which in turn connects to the top of the water gauge. There's a bit of a problem with the gas system. Well, two problems. When I open the gas valve, no gas comes out of the end of the pipe that fits into the boiler, which also does not have a jet. The thread for a gas jet is normally 1BA, but this is some sort of a metric thread. I may be wrong, but looking closer at the steam plant, it does have the feel of being made in China. The worst thing, though, was the water gauge lower fitting had been leaking for quite a long time, and there was a pile of lime scale on the outside of the boiler. And not unsurprisingly, when I unscrewed the water gauge lower fitting, it just snapped off, leaving part of it behind in the boiler bush. This is a common problem with steam models, as most of the time the fittings are made from brass. This causes the brass to de zincify which makes it very weak and it snaps off, just like you can see in this clip. This part is completely unserviceable. I'm going to fit a new water gauge, and of course a new water gauge glass because this one's broken. In retrospect I should have started the video while the customer was with me, but unfortunately the workshop built onto the kitchen is very small. This black plastic thing on the left is a piezoelectric igniter. That's also covered in limescale. I'm going to use some WD-40 and spray the boiler to get rid of all the limescale that's left. With the help of an old toothbrush and the WD-40, I was able to clean the boiler to remove this residue. Here's a view from the other side. I noticed that the wood cladding has been burnt by gas blowing out of the hole at the bottom. This is possibly due to the burner having an oversized gas jet. More about this in a future episode. Model boat steam plants need an exhaust condenser fitting because if you don't fit an exhaust condenser, which is also an oil trap, the oil ends up in spots all over the lake. A lot of boat clubs would not even let you sail this on a lake without an exhaust condenser oil trap. That is not really part of the job for me though. I need to take steps to make the engine work properly, unseize the propeller shaft, connect it all together and run the engine, both on compressed air and steam. Initially the engine would not rotate at all, but with a liberal application of WD-40, 
Very soon, slight movement was detected. With the help of plenty of WD-40 and some lubricating oil, the amount of available movement was increased. This is the water pump, it's not connected to anything, and to be honest, I've never seen one quite like this before. Before connecting the airline and pumping compressed air in, I need to make sure that all of the moving parts have a coating of lubricating oil. Obviously, over-oiling like this will cause it to run down the engine and end up on the bed plate, but this isn't a problem, you can wipe it off with a cloth quite easily. If you're doing a job like this on a very small engine, the most important thing not to do is use too much force and damage the engine. Don't forget this is a very small unit. The next part of the job is of critical importance and pumping a lot of lubricating oil into the cylinders. After doing this I turned the engine over once again by hand quite a lot of times. Then I connected my airline from the compressor. The first problem I encountered was the fact that the lubricator's drain valve was leaking. I don't recommend using pliers but sometimes they are necessary. First of all the engine wouldn't go. It tried to rotate but it kept stopping. And then after a considerable time this happened. The engine's not running very well and it will not run slowly. It needs a bit more running to free it off. Eventually I increased the air pressure to 35 pounds per square inch and now it runs like this. It's starting to run a lot better. I stopped the engine and cleaned away all the oil that had run down onto the bed plate. I don't think this engine has run very much. For instance, there is black oil coming out of the water pump and this is not a good sign. The engine is still stiff and reluctant to start by itself. I would recommend to the owner of this boat if he's not going to use this water pump, disconnect it and remove it from the plant. I know I'm repeating myself in this episode, but it really is very important to flood the engine with oil. And although I'm not showing it, it's very important to put plenty of oil down the steam inlet. After running the engine like this for about 20 minutes, it's definitely starting to feel better. When using a water pump to pump water, the water lubricates the piston and the cylinder. In this case, nothing is lubricating the piston and the cylinder, so I've injected some oil into it. And now the pump is pumping some oil. After a further 20 minutes of running, with more oiling, the engine's starting to run well. You wouldn't think so, but this is in slow motion. It's just it's a very small engine, and it normally runs very fast. That's it for this preview, which is longer than I thought it was going to be. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back